I'm Nathan Richards. I'm the program head at the Maritime Heritage Program at the uh, UNC Coastal Studies Institute. May of this year, we had a phone call from a resident of Water Lily on Karatuk Sound that the water had been driven out by wind adjacent to their property and a series of timbers had been discovered. So we travelled out there to see what those timbers were. The resident had kept these timbers in a waterlogged state, so they were able to preserve a lot of the information. And from there, we were able to see that the timbers look suspiciously old. Basically, an agreement was reached between East Carolina University, the UNC Coastal Studies Institute, and the state of North Carolina that we would take those timbers, maintain them in a waterlogged state, and bring them to the CSI facility where they would be able to sit preserving a lot of that information. And over time, we would record them and collect a lot of the forensic information that might give us clues as to the function of the ship, the uh, age of the ship, uh, and other, other historical details. Um, hopefully, connecting us to Karatuk history, uh, North Carolina history. So right now they're sitting in some retention ponds and then what we do is we get ready to do a recording session. That means we go and remove them from the retention ponds. Uh, we keep them in some tubs of water, again, to, to keep them waterlogged. And we take them and put them on platforms to do very detailed photography of every surface of the timber, as well as all of the features on the timber, whether it's the fastener or the nail, the holes, evidence of wear or evidence of use, tool use and things like that. And then we will also record everything in detail by drawing. So we'll do illustration. In this particular instance, we're tracing the timbers. So we're, we're doing very careful scale drawings by using greenhouse plastic, uh, laying that on top of the timbers and then tracing off all the details and then encoding the drawing with all kinds of descriptions. So one of the things that happens to waterlogged timbers as they sit on the seafloor or the river floor is that the cellulose that makes up the cell of the wood will deteriorate. And as it deteriorates, it fills up with water. Um, so if you take a big piece of waterlogged wood out of the water that's been there for a long time, it feels very solid, but that solid feeling is predominantly water. And then what happens is if you let it dry out, that water seeps out, comes out of the wood, and that cell wall collapses, and that distorts the timber. And through that process of distortion, we lose a lot of the really important information. After we've recorded them, that's what we'll call a pre-conservation drawing, and they'll go to East Carolina University where they're gonna be put under a conservation treatment that will take the water out but replace it at the same time with a different substance that fills in that gap or the, the space that the cellulose once held. The traits that we're looking to identify when we look at these timbers, we're looking at the shape of the timber, uh, we're looking whether it's very flat and how it curves. That's going to maybe tell us something about the function of the vessel because we might have very flat bottom boats or ships operating in Karatuk Sound. But at a certain point in time, we had deeper V-hulled vessels that were operating. We also look at the, the textures on the surfaces of the timber. Sometimes that will show us things like tool markings. It'll show us how, whether we see ads marks or saw marks from when the timber was actually felled from the forest. We're also interested in looking at whether there's holes in the timber that might be where old nails were. In this particular instance, we have a lot of what are called tr tree nails or trunnels, which are wooden nails. These, one of the hallmarks of the construction of this particular uh, set of timbers is that there's predominantly wooden nails, which is a hallmark of something that's old. The research regarding the age is still ongoing because the, one of the things that we can also do is we can sample the wood and we can do potentially do dendrochronology, which is a technique where you remove a piece of timber. It has tree rings. Those tree rings, they relate to a master sequence of growth, growth patterns for a particular species of wood, and that might tell us how old it is. That's the other reason we keep uh, the timbers waterlogged. Um, the other thing we're also interested in is the timber species because that might tell us whether it's a locally built ship or whether it's a the timbers that have come from somewhere else and been built here or maybe it's a, a ship built somewhere else that just happened to wreck here. 
In this particular case, it hasn't just been a, a number of academics from a, a university that have come out and recorded these shipwrecks. We've actually actively used the residents of Dare County and Karatuk County. Uh, we run an uh, initiative called the Nautical Archaeology Society Initiative, where we actually train people in how to do underwater archaeology or maritime history and to work with maritime archaeologists. And so we've held a series of workshops and we're going to hold some more where members of the public actually come out, handle the timbers and learn how to properly photograph them illustrate them and, and get those skill sets. Um, we hope that that will show people uh, just how much information is embedded in these sort of ephemeral bits of, of maritime artifact and that they can also then engage in future recording when other discoveries of shipwrecks happen out, out here on the coast. The reason it's important to record these sort of tim these timbers is because um, they're often insights into history where the history wasn't ordinarily written down. Um, a lot of people didn't write about their local shipbuilding traditions, and so the only way that we can get at those is through pieces of pieces of disarticulated timber. As I said, there hasn't been very many shipwrecks found, um, and these are, the, are maybe the only clues to some parts of Karatak County's maritime history.